Hey folks, Jonathan here. All right, motorcycle time. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can call them mopeds, whatever you want to call them. But anyway, Honda Trail 90 with high and low. Nice bike. Uh, let me see. This one does not have the extra fuel tank. It does have a buddy seat. Uh, this one has got an uh, extra fuel tank and a buddy seat. This one is a 1971, I believe. 70 or 71. I think it's 70. This is a 73. This one has got 593 miles on it. And this one has got 581 miles on it. 581. Okay, I lied about this one. This one's 5,938. So 5,938. I knew one of them was higher. And this one has only got 581. I have no doubt that's original miles. This thing's, you know, they're clean bikes. Nice bikes. It's kind of dark in here. I'm hoping it picks up okay. And there's my, uh, this is, uh, I think it's a 72 model. Uh, bought that one, redone it. I've rode it a lot. Uh, come out here and started it the other day, and the clutch is acting up on it, so I got to tear into it. And it was always smoking a little bit, so I've actually bought a cylinder and piston and stuff for it. And it came with a title and the original helmet that the girl got with it when her dad bought it for I actually bought it from the original owners and really really nice little bike enjoy riding that one this is the one we're messing with right now this is a 1981 Honda Passport now, the best I can tell this is a two-year only bike 80 and 81 they made them in a few different sizes this is a 70 cc it was legal on the road in 86 uh, I bought this missing the fairing which you can buy missing the cover for this side which I think might have been a tool pouch and then the other side is the battery cover is missing uh, stuff that they took off while they was working on it never put back on so they put a new carburetor on it the fuel lines were rotted so the other day I had never messed with this thing I bought it years ago it was nice and clean and looks good you know seats nice uh, underneath let me show you so underneath the seat you know, to me, it looks like brand new. It's just perfect. And uh, so I pulled the tank out, checked the tank. It's pretty clean. Not bad at all. Uh, put all new fuel lines on it. Went ahead and put fuel filters in line also. And got it all hooked up to the new carburetor that's on it, which is not the right carburetor, but it's probably a Chinese aftermarket that they bought. But I don't have the correct one for it, so that's all we got. And I tried to start it. And this is electric start also. So we actually uh, hooked a six volts to it cranked it over a while it's popping through the carburetor and the exhaust and didn't have the compression it should have so what I done is I made a purchase and now look I'm not I'm not one to promote or buy stuff from China especially right now but um, you know there's not a lot of options on getting these parts for this thing unfortunately and if they made them in the United States and they charge twice as much for them I'd, I'd buy them from the United States in a minute if they were US made but these were made in China and I don't mean China Grove North Carolina down the road here it's made in China so uh, I didn't order them from China they was already here in the United States but uh, California I believe but they are Chinese but uh, so cylinder piston rings this was a kit I bought with the head brand new already has a cam it's supposed to be a high lift cam who knows uh, rockers Everything's already there and together. It's got the cam timing, timing gear. Uh, total price for this, $60. Now, and I'll be honest with you, if this was American made, and same condition it is here, you know, same stuff, and I bought it, I'd have gave, you know, $200 or $300 for it. And wouldn't have minded a bit because it was American made. But, you know, unfortunately, the EPA kills companies making this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, the emissions and stuff are so bad and then we got the unions in and and you know the the labor rates are so high we can't compete and you know that's what we end up with we end up having to buy this stuff well I mean you know you either buy it or you you just don't do it so anyway that's the plan is to pull this top end down today and see if I can get this thing running uh, my grandson has got a a go-kart and his dad done a bunch of work on it got it fixed up for him and uh, he's been riding it and driving it by himself, so he. Uh, I figured I'd put something together to go ride around the the little track they got down there with him one time, and maybe we'll be able to do that this evening. But I've uh, been working on parts for the cordless engine. I've made uh, a bunch of parts for it, 
and we're still rolling with it. Uh, I sort of have a goal to get it running here within a week or so, so we'll see how that goes. But got to have time for the grandson, and this is, you know, part of that. So let me get this thing apart, and we have to take the side cover off here because that's where our timing marks are. And, of course, the cam, timing marks inside that cover. Take the bolt from the other side, pops loose. It's a pretty easy job, not much to it. Uh, never done one with electric start on it. I don't think i got to take that cover off. I don't believe. So we'll see how that works out, though. But anyway, we're going to take her down, take her apart, and go from there. All right. Okay, we got everything down. Didn't see any issues with the valves. So now we're getting ready to pull the uh, jug off. And uh, we'll see what is wrong with the... Uh, the rings I'm assuming it's pretty wet in the cylinder with oil so that tells me that rings probably wasn't seating at all but anyway we just about got it apart everything's went good nothing's broke nothing you know stuck or anything like that so it's pretty simple all right all right folks we definitely found our problem see that piston them rings are galled and shot and all in no good so let's get this piston off and we'll start getting the new one on and I'll show you how to set the timing on a passport, so on the the cam timing. So uh, we'll have to readjust the valves and everything once we get it all together. And shouldn't take much to have it run, have it started up. So show you more. All right, folks. Sometimes these little jobs turn into more major jobs, and this one took a turn when it come time to get the piston off the rod. So I've gotten the clips off. The rod is actually the wrist. The wrist pin's actually stuck in the rod. And I, I've tried, and I don't want to bend the rod trying to get it, so I think I'm going to heat it and uh, see if we can get it to come out that way. And I'm sure it will swell it out and come out. i uh, just got to be careful because we've got fuel lines and a gas tank, and we don't want to catch no fire. So uh, we'll get the torches around here and see what we can do with it. All right. All right, folks, piston's off. I had to uh, melt part of the piston to get where I needed to get to heat the rod. So... It's shot, but it was scalded bad. Rings were shot. I wrapped the carburetor and stuff up with a wet rag. So if there was any leaks, maybe I wouldn't get it on fire. So I moved the motorcycle to the torch instead of the torch to the motorcycle. It was a lot easier. But I had to put air in the tires anyway, where it had been sitting. So we're going to go ahead and start putting it back together and get it rolled back in the building here. And uh, hopefully we can get that wrist pin to go in there and be free in that rod because it was tight uh, it galled to it or stuck to it but there's no uh, bushing in it so it does pivot on the rod or on the piston too so we'll see what we can do about getting it together okay folks we got the piston in jug on head on and we've actually got it back in time so I'll show you how simple this is uh, line up T for top dead center right here and line this up straight backwards the two teeth will be in between here it's that easy uh, no problem now this is a passport so you don't have the flywheel with the marks you uh, you actually have that's a uh, centrifugal advance and the marks are on it so it's a little different the points are on the outside They're a lot easier to get to than what than under the flywheel so uh, anyway that's it that's all you got to do now we just got to Put everything on, torque everything down, and uh, we'll see if this thing's going to start up and run. Uh, it should. There's no reason why it shouldn't, but, you know, things happen sometimes. I was going to go ahead and use the Honda head, but I decided to go ahead and use this one. And, uh, you know, I, I know it's probably, the Honda head's probably a better head, but, I mean, this being new and having a high lift cam, it might help it out a little bit. Supposedly high lift. Probably stop. But, uh anyway there you go maybe three-quarter racing cam all right folks uh gonna try it see what happens here uh, have not ever heard it run just got it back together hoping it's gonna fire uh i seen they had aluminum foil on the points i left it alone uh, we'll see if it fires but uh i don't know don't know if the carburetor's good or anything Air prop. Clutch slip is this used to. I'm gonna turn the fuel on. Yeah.
having some carb issues for sure. Okay, folks, uh, running but not running good. It's popping. The, I can see a spark down there where they got the aluminum foil on there. We're going to pull that off and see why they got it there. I don't know. I don't know what to. I actually got it wrapped around the whole point. I don't understand that at all. I don't know how it was even running. So let me see what the problem is. All right, folks. Everything's done. Uh, finally got the point straightened out. They had uh, put aluminum foil on one side of the points instead of filing them or sanding them or grinding them. I've never seen that before. Bottom end's a little noisy. We're going to try it. Uh, runs good. Shifts good. We'll see what happens. All right. Okay, folks, I just uh, put about 10 miles on it. I actually drove it two miles to my son's and then rode around with my grandson a bunch. He was on a go-kart. Then I rode it up and down the road a little bit more, and then I rode it back home, so it was uh, over four miles just there and back. So I've got what I see as an oil leak. It's getting oil all over here. It's coming through here, too. So it could be, it could be around the... Uh, the sprocket where the shaft comes out for the sprocket so I may have to get into that but otherwise I don't see any issues uh, now I've never seen this before but somebody had taken aluminum foil and put over the points on one side instead of grinding or fouling the surface of the points you know the contact and I've never seen that before and it actually had really good spark, but uh, it didn't last long. <laughs> you know, we, as you've seen, it died, and then uh, I had to figure out what was wrong. But everything, you know, the head, everything bolted on perfect. There wasn't any holes that was misdrilled or off or anything like that. Uh, did not like the bolts that were in the timing gear. They just looked like so cheap bolts. But uh, So don't use them. Use your originals. And... Uh, Everything else is good on it. Uh, it's a nice bike. Transmission's great. A uh, little bit of, you know, rattle to it. Nothing too bad. I probably need to go back through the valves and adjust them again anyway, but uh, it starts really nice and really easy. Let me see. Turn it on and uh, see how good she'll start. That quick and that easy. But, uh, so... About 32, 33 mile an hour is what I was cruising at. I didn't want to go any faster than that. I don't want to blow it up. Uh, but, I, you know, I put enough miles on it now that I know that it's okay. I think what they had done is they evidently ran it without an air cleaner. You know, I've got it shoved on there. I don't have the clamp on it. It goes on real good and tight, but I need to get the clamp on it. But uh, they evidently ran it without that on there. But anyway, so I think that's, uh, they messed the piston up that way. That's what I believe anyway. And, uh. It's smoking a little bit over here where I, I had actually spilt the oil when I put it in earlier. And I figured it would burn off by now, but you can still see a little bit on the exhaust mantle, or on the uh, pipe. So, I am probably going to go ahead and order the fairing and the two covers for this thing. They're kind of expensive, but it'll clean up to be a really, really nice bike. Like I said, i got one oil leak to fix, and I hadn't bought a battery for it yet. It, there's no battery in it. And just some cleanup and stuff, and this will be, you know, just about a mint bike. There's no rust on the rims or anything like that. So, and when you do this timing, that's what a lot of people are scared of, is the timing on these things. It's really, really simple to do. There's nothing to it, and you can't get it 180 out. There's no such thing as 180 out on the cam timing. And you can't get the points timing off because it's wasted ignition. And when I say wasted ignition, is it's the points run on the crankshaft instead of the cam. And so every rotation, it fires instead of every other rotation. So you get a wasted ignition in between uh, power strokes every time, but it's not, you know, it's no issue. It just, that's just the way it works. And, you know, the plate's adjustable. I put it right back where it was when I took it apart. I didn't want to change the, uh, the actual spark timing on it. And like I said, besides this oil leak I see we got that I'm gonna have to address, no doubt. Uh, side covers, the fairing, and the lower section of the chain guard is also missing. Uh, 
besides that, this is a really clean, really nice bike. And, uh, I think the 1981 there. And anyway, so I was able to go ride with my grandson, and that was uh, that was what I was really wanting to do anyway. So it worked out just fine. Cut it together in time. So now I'm gonna clean my mess up here, and we're gonna call it a night. All right. Appreciate everybody watching. Uh, till next time. Bye.